You're about to see a clip from a film I made about a cowboy. I'm David Hoffman, filmmaker. And this particular cowboy is amazing. Spike Van Cleve, this massive ranch in Montana, five generations of horse people. And he's a real cowboy and he's a real rancher and he's a real horseman. And unbeknownst to me till I got there, he's a poet, a magnificent poet. I can hear the phrases in my head like they were being spoken yesterday. Spike Van Cleve, Montana Horseman. For me to describe space is a real hard thing because I've always known it. Foothills, green foothills, good springs and the draws and big old white peaks, mountains, 11,000 feet and better. Just miles of open country. Sound of water in the creek. Sound of the wind in, in trees. There's no distractions. There's a squeak of saddle leather and the sound of horses, hooves in the grass, and maybe a little wind, maybe a lot of wind. It's a real good time to think. I have heard it said that uh, a man that is completely satisfied has no ambition. But then I must be an unambitious son of God. I'm completely satisfied. My family's been a horse family ever since my granddad started ranching. We brought good horses into the country and bred good horses. There aren't many men running horse outfits nowadays, but I am and always will be. Till I die. Come get! There are times when everything is just perfect. And that's invariably when I'm riding a good horse and gathering a bunch of good horses. The feeling of a horse traveling fast under you and the wind in your face and a good looking bunch of horses ahead of you with their tails in the air and laid straight. To say I appreciate what I've got would be an, an understatement. If I go to heaven, it can't be any better than a good day under the crazies on a good horse. Well, my granddad told me, and I fully agree, that if God had wanted a man to walk, he'd give him four feet. <laughs> Fundamentally, a horse is horses are ladies and gentlemen. And like people, some of them are more ladies and a lot more gentlemen. Ah, that's the one we've been looking for. <laughs> There are an awful lot of people that I don't think as much of as I do, as Ooh, I do of an awful lot of horses. Oh, baby. Oh, come here, baby. And I've oh, also baby. known people that baby. I... Oh, oh, baby. We're good enough to be good horses. Easy, little honey. Okay, you coming with me, huh? I can talk to them a little bit. They can tell whether you like them, whether you don't like them, whether you're afraid, or whether you just... Friendly and nice. Oh, ho, ho, ho. you're your mommy's last coat. I think I'll name you Lady Lace. What do you think? Now you all right? Was well, the? You're fine. Don't need to worry about you. <coughs> Ooh, lady. Ooh, man. Ooh. Yeah, you're all clean. Oh, you got more milk in the milk cow. I think that colt's gonna do plum pie. Lady Lace. Look at there. Look at the expression. Hey, you booger. Hey, you booger. My wife says I can whisper a horse like a gypsy. I don't believe that, but I know I can talk them out of... I've talked bucking horses out of bucking me off a number of times. 
I was riding with my dad all day when I was five, six years old. And uh, I'd be lucky if I'd get him to stop for lunch. I might get a drink of water if he wasn't in too much of a hurry. In his time, he must have run with some tough customers. And he's the only person I've ever met in my life that I don't think had any conception of what fear for, for himself meant. <laughs> oh, she was a dandy. She could ride any horse that you could corral. She rode with a straddle when it wasn't quite the thing to do. She had a split riding skirt, and she rolled cigarettes out of Bull Durham. She was a crying example of a person living their own life and never hurting anyone else. You don't appreciate your parents till they're long gone. When my wife and I got married, we were married in September, and I had $13, and we lived on that $13 until the next June. She'd part of me. She'd been part of my life for 40 years. She's had a tough life. I'm not the easiest guy in the world to live with, I'll guarantee you. He's good to horse, Sam. Friendship between a man and a horse comes from liking one another, knowing one another, and being together on. He wasn't a day old when I first saw Sam. He's a workmanlike, honest gentleman. He'd do anything. Well, he's not to, wasn't in the lead when the smarts were given out, but when he uh, figures out what you want, he'll do it. But he gets boogers. When there's nothing going on, he gets to imagining things. Horse has a vivid imagination anyway. And he'll go going, you know, if I slap him, say, cut it out, why, okay, he quits. But if I don't, all of a sudden, he'll turn inside out. He And he's terrible. He's strong and he's quick. He shied me off one day right on my head, right over his head. And then he ran off. He'd come back and peep over the hill. He'd get his just his eyes over the hill. He'd look at me. Afraid he's going to get whipped, so he'd beat it. But finally, when he let me catch him, why, I was so tickled the way the big devil had been acting, and I just tied my rein and rode on home. <laughs> I think that when I'm riding Sam, it's kind of like being in God's pocket. Nothing going to happen to me. If I wasn't a man, I'd like to be a horse, and I would like to be a horse like Sam. I had the best of it. I cut the tail end of the real horse age when we really worked horses. And nobody can ever take the memories of it away. They're proud of doing a good job, and they're proud of the way they look. Come on, son. A man can earn complete honesty from a good horse. Do your best to do what you're supposed to do every time. That is a pretty good recipe for living a good life. I mean, do the best you can every time you're asked to do it. Maybe I have a glorified idea of horses. Perhaps I have, but I enjoy it. I've fired men because they took care of themselves before they did the horses. They'd ride a horse all day, and before they fed the horse, they'd go eat supper. I couldn't be happy if I couldn't work. Come home, you done work for the day. Then to walk on up to the house and open the back door and come into a nice warm house and find my wife there. I wouldn't trade it for anything. When you come in, she says, Boy, honey, I'm glad to see you home. And the reply usually is that I'm glad to be home too. 
The man that doesn't learn from life is awful dumb, seems to me. He, uh, <laughs> he doesn't pay much attention to what, what has happened to him and why it's happened to him. There are lots of things a fellow can laugh at. But if a man laughs easy, he should laugh at himself as well as at anyone else. Nowadays, I think everyone has a right to their opinion. It may not be right, but in their mind it's right. My opinion may not be right, but as far as I'm concerned, it is right. There are quite a bunch of us who are independent and individualists who say, leave me alone. Well, I think that's what the Revolutionary War was fought all about. Freedom for a man to do what he wanted, so long as he didn't hurt somebody else. Being with Spike Van Cleve was such a treat. Incredible man, an incredible poet. I still have in my head phrases that he said. One of them, if you feed yourself before you feed your horses, you get fired. I just loved it, the way he put it. And then how about, I caught the tail end of the horse age. I've used it ever since. I caught the tail end of the horse age. What a poet. If you enjoyed this film and you'd like to see more, David Hoffman has a lot of films that I'm trying to put up on YouTube. Please support me, www.patreon.com forward slash all in a day. Thank you.